Good? We're started? Mm -hmm. All right. So today, to review, to review, today we are talking about the scientific method and we're reviewing inferences. So I've given you an envelope that has 20 words in it. You're not supposed to look at the words. They're all face down. There is a piece of paper. You have three minutes. Right now, you're allowed to turn over just five words. Turn over five cards and try to figure out what the story is saying. So use your inferences and write a hypothesis, number one. So your number one person is writing a story based on the cards that are turned over. OK? Thank you. Oh no, that's the worst you've ever done. A fat white person ate ice cream on the sidewalk. Ah. Sounds good. I want to eat some ice cream on the sidewalk right now. <laughs> that's what we think the story's going to be about. Right, so these are your five. And you have stories. the hypothesis right here. Looks good. five more words. So go ahead and flip over five more words and let's see how your story changes with five more words. Pass the paper to seat number two and that person will write hypothesis number two. Thank you very much. Right, make sure you're working with your group and discussing, not drawing on the paper. Okay? Is the drawing for another class or just for fun? It's Work on what we're working on. Did number two, right? You were number two? I wrote it. Right the, fat, the, the fat white dog ate the little boat and walked the Oh, they got me mad. No, because Perfect. How'd we do? Great. Uh, I think we Is the story good. changing big time? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And it's supposed to. All right. All right. We're on our phone checking Edsby or asking mom about our lunch delivery today. <laughs> We got, we got our hypothesis written. Yeah. There's our sentence. We got that. All right. How are we doing? Does the story change now a little bit? Kind of. The fat house. Got it. I used to live in that house. Got it. Good. Now I got it written right here, and then you're ready for hypothesis three. All right. All right. So. Now you know the drill. Ladies and gentlemen, 3210 talking. Now you know the drill. The drill is I'm going to let you turn over five more cards. I'm going to give you four minutes this time because there's more cards. Let's see if you can get the story put together. Okay? Let's see how the story improves. Yeah. Is there a right story? There is a right story. All right? But there's nothing wrong with having a different story. It's the fun of the activity. All right, so now you have three or four minutes with your 15 words. So I sold it and said, so let somebody else do it. Yeah. Turn up. On. Wait, what? His prairie dog ate a bone and carried turnips on, on the dog carrying a bone. Me and White House Little Ace walked up. Wait, I'm put walked up. Yeah. Sure. Walked up. Yeah, for sure. Because we don't have anything else to write. RJ, That's RJ. Fine. I didn't stand up to be on We got it written down already? Yeah. Perfect. Boom. But I guess you don't have a period yet. It's a period. His little white house walked into the big turnips and bowl. Wait, I'm going to change. And on the bowl. And eight. Oh, yeah. Eight. Walking through it. Eight. Walked into the house. He ate his little turnips on the prairie. <laughs> So how'd we do? We are doing good. 
fat and red dog walk into the house, turn on his bone, and turn him. Good. Can we have it written down? I was actually doing the karaoke to the song. All right. Use your five minutes with all 20 words right now, and let's. we'll look at our stories at the end and compare. No. The white man on. had walk. The turn of carrying into the house on the bull. We don't get this. <laughs> Both right. that of eight sure. and period. Do it. You can change any order that you want. Try to make oh. a story that makes sense. Cock a doodle doo. Carrying. Love. Good. The little white house on the prairie walking into the big red house. <laughs> Try not to lose any words. Makes it hard for the next period when <laughs> you lose words. It might even help. You guys are the only ones doing it in a structure like that, so it's fine. I love how you guys are thinking outside the box. Maybe it'll help to put it more in a sentence structure reading like that, but really I don't want to stifle your creativity, okay? So that's okay. You guys just keep working, it's great. All right, so here we go. Let's share our sentences. So what did you guys get? Group one, and then we're just gonna go in order. Group one, just read your sentence. His fat red prairie dog ate a big white bone. You're good. And carrying the turnip into a house on the bone. Um, little the dog. Okay. What did you guys get? Okay, Read it. Put, the little Perry dog walked his big bone into the White House carrying the red of uh, turnips on a bowl, fat and eight. All right. What did you guys get? A bowl. Period. A big fat red dog walked and white ate the little bone of turnips. I mean, on his white bowl carrying the house oh, into the prairie. prairie. All right. Go ahead. You guys go. The little white house on the prairie walked into the big red turnip carrying a fat dog bone and ate a big dog. All right, what about you guys? What'd you get? The big dog walked into the little house carrying a bowl of white turnip turnips and his ate a fat red bone on the prairie. All right, and you guys, last one. Okay, the little prairie dog walked into his house carrying turnips and a fat white bone on the big red bowl of the eight. All right, so the actual sentence is right here. This is the original sentence, but the thing is, there's no wrong way to do it. One of the things that we've been talking about this year is being able to have your own story. So this is what the original cards looked like before we cut them out, okay? That's what they look like, all right? Now, let's have a further discussion on this. All right. So tell me real quick, a little further discussion on this. Tell me, how do you think this activity relates to science in the real world? So raise your hand and let's uh, discuss that. How do you think this activity relates to science in the real world? Go ahead. Put things to put things together? Like, All right. Stuff out. Is there ever a time when scientists have a puzzle like this? Yeah. And they, they get the pieces just a little bit at a time? All right, every day? What do you think? You have to like, use the evidence that you have to solve the big picture. All right, have the evidence you have to solve the big picture. And so what do we use to improve our ability to be able to do this? What do scientists develop over the years to make it easier and easier to accomplish tasks when you just have a little bit? Go ahead. Better thinking skills. What else could they use? More information. More information. They're always collecting more data. What else? So think about data that they collected 100 years ago versus data they might be collecting today. What is developing over that time period to make? Ah, technology. So with better technology, they might get better data collected. And so they can get the picture put together better. OK? So. They're always trying to develop the technology to improve this. So think about the first microscope invented to microscopes today where they have electron microscopes. Think about the first cell phone invented 25 years ago versus the cell phone today 
that's basically a little computer in your pocket that can do so many different things. A production studio, all right? Able to communicate, all right? This phone right here basically eliminates the mail service because you can just send an email to somebody in a second, all right? Think about what the mail service used to be. What was it called in the great wild west? What was it called? Horse and buggy. Close. It was called the Pony Express. Express. And how long would it usually take to get months. a message? Eight Maybe eight. months, Four weeks, years. days. Years. Now I can send a text message to a friend of mine in California and he gets it in a second and responds to me. Do you guys know how amazing that is? That's why, that's why I'm trying to change my class a little bit and use this technology to our advantage. All right, can I get a thumbs up from everybody? Do you like that idea, how that's working? A thumbs up on that? Very good. All right, so finally, um, finally, why do you think each group had different answers? Why? Yadlin. Very good. And so there's different scientists all over the world working on similar problems. And what do they get, Jessica? We have different minds and we get different answers. <laughs> and what should the scientists do when they get those different answers? Compare them. Share them. Just and compare them. All right? And what if Camilo, what if Camilo is 100% sure that he's right? And what if uh, Damien is 100% sure that he's right, and RJ is 100% sure that she's right. What do you have to do with all of you? What do you have to do with the information? And what does Nisha say about those three things? What's that called when Nisha looks at everybody else's evidence and has like an outside view of it? Observing, comparison, what else? Does anybody know there's a, there's a special term for it? where you look at their information to try to help to see if it's correct. It's a blank review. We talked about it at one point. It is called peer review. When you get your peers to look at your information and decide whether they collected it right, whether the information makes sense, okay? so. One of the things that this activity tries to ask you to do, try to keep your eyes on me, try to keep your ears listening. One of the things that this activity tries to do is compare the job of a paleontologist. What's a paleontologist again? Hands up. A dinosaur scientist. He looks for bones. So think back to like King Arthur's time when they find one of those huge leg bones. What do they say exists? Maybe two things come to mind. Think King Arthur's time, oh. medieval times. What could it be? A dragon? And they're not too far off. Dinosaurs, they look almost like dragons, right? Or what else did they think existed in that time period? What are they? Giants or monsters. But over time, over time, as we've traveled over more of the continent and the globe, we know that the monsters and the dragons don't exist, but they probably were dinosaurs that lived in previous time. Yes, they are dinosaurs. Very good. All right. So uh, the last piece of the puzzle is what did we make? What did we make about the story? What, what did we make about the story when we were putting our sentences together? What were we doing? We were making inferences. We were collaborating, teamwork. We were assuming what the story would be. So if you saw a big red dog, I heard someone say it, Clifford, but this story has nothing to do with Clifford, right? Yeah. Somebody else had House and the Prairie or something like that. So maybe, yeah, Little House and the Prairie. Or somebody saw the word dog and prairie, and so what did you put together? Prairie dog, okay? So there's different inferences that you made throughout this process. So good job, guys. You did a really good job. I appreciate it. You did good working together. Thank you.